First of all, thank you for coming. Um, the second thing I want to say for me, it's really something special to sit here with these three people. Um, because that's not the normal thing to do with my background. I'm German. Um, I'm here in Houston for a brief research term that I do. I'm a medical doctor. Um, and my family history is the opposite side of what you heard. So to put it in one sentence, all the atrocities that you heard that these people went through, my grandfather did them. Um, you heard the story about Kiev, about the Ukraine. My grandfather was there as part of an SS elite troop. Although I do not have the historical proofs of it, it's quite probable that he had been part of these mass shootings that took place in eastern Poland and in the Ukraine. What happened there is they drove the Jews out in the woods, uh, they made them dig large trenches, they shot them one by one, and then they covered them with earth. And there are eyewitness reports that two days later, the earth moved because people were not all dead and they tried to crawl out of these trenches. And my grandfather was there as part of the SS right at that time. After that, he went on to a large battle in Russia. Uh, he was wounded there. He was transported back to Prague uh, in the Czech Republic nowadays. And for one and a half years, he became a trainer in an SS training camp, uh, which was huge. It was like 10 miles to 15 miles. It was 20,000 people who had been evicted from their villages. And they set up this training camp there for SS people for all of Eastern Europe. And surrounding this training camp was concentration camp, sub camps, um, and I have, there's not a lot, a lot of historical documentations about this SS training camp, but you can imagine of what was trained there. And my grandfather was one of those who did that. And then after the war, so you heard these stories of people coming to America, hardly having anything, um, putting their lives back together. That's not the story of my grandfather. He was never put before a court. Uh, he left this training camp before the Russian army came there. He got rid of the tattoo that all the SS people had on their left upper arm. Uh, he went into hiding. And in only one and a half years after the war, he started a business, he started a family, he got married. And in 1947, my father was born as the, one of, uh, five, as the first of five brothers and sisters. So at a time where most of the Jews were still in the DP camps, were still struggling, were still struggling to get over what they experienced, my grandfather had it all together. Uh, and only last year I found the denazification form that all the German men had to fill out uh, that were asking questions of how were they involved in, uh, in the Nazi parties, Nazi organizations. Um, and I have the historical proofs, I have the uh, military records of my grandfathers. I know that he was in this elite troop of the SS, but in the denazification form when the question uh, came, have you been part of the SS or any affiliated organization? He wrote no. And they believed him and he was never put before a court or anything, but he just went on with his life. So how do I know all that? Not because my grandfather told me. I never met my grandfather. He died long before I was born. But I also don't know these facts because my father told, told me. I faced in my family the same silence that many of the survivors faced in their families. They just didn't talk about it. So what we had to do is we went into the archives, we went into uh, the documentations, and only after we really wanted to know and wanted to find out the truth about our families, we did find out the truth. And the things we found broke our hearts. 
um, because we saw that. So we were a group of about 200, 250 people, and mostly all of us found out things like our grandfathers were in the Wehrmacht, our grandfathers were in the SS, our grandfathers were concentration camp guards, our grandfathers were putting up com concentration camps, our grandfathers were Nazi scientists, everything. We found it in our own family histories. We need to acknowledge her for doing this. You, are there a lot of Nazi descendants doing what she's doing? No. So we need to really acknowledge her for a moment if you want to applaud her. As a perpetrator's descendant, what is your viewpoint on individuals who deny the existence of the Holocaust and can it be justified for these people to accept this mindset? So, when I speak to people who have a hard time to connect to the Holocaust, what I normally do is I tell them, well, I met the survivors. Um, and for me, it's after talking to people like those sitting here, it's hard to deny the Holocaust. It's easy if it's just distanced, but it's hard if you know these people and the other side is we are taught about the Holocaust in German schools and everything um, but it's always like distant history and they talk about the Nazis who were, the were, were so bad and about the Germans who did all these things. Um, what they never tell you is that these Nazis and these Germans who did these atrocities were our grandfathers. And once you get this link and once it gets personal and it gets into the family, it's hard to deny it. As a medical doctor, what has made you so interested in the history of Germans' work with radiology? I'm a radiation oncologist. Um, so after I went, after I started digging into my family's history and seeing what that meant to me and what that meant to other people talking about it. Um, I came across a book about uh, human experimentation in Auschwitz and I read about the sterilization experiments they did there with x-rays. And I was like, well, I think as a German radiation oncologist I should know about that. Um, but no one ever told us at medical school or during my residency or anything. So uh, what I did, did is I wrote an email to the German Society of Radiation Oncology and I, I said, well, I came across this book. Um, has anyone ever dealt with that? Is there an official statement of the society, anything? And the first email that came back was, uh, no, we haven't dealt with this subject and there is no current discussion. And so, I followed up on that and I came in contact with one of the board members of the society and we said we want to do something about it. And um, we decided to join with the Radiology Society uh, just because of the reason that radiology and radiation oncology were at the time of the 1930s, 1940s when the Holocaust happened, it was one specialty. So um, it wouldn't, we would have done the same work twice if we had done the radiation oncology project and the radiology project. Um, so we joined together and uh, we had a historian work on this project for two years. Um, and at the moment I'm working on educating young residents in radiation oncology to know the history of where radiation oncology comes from. Did the discovery of your grandfather's past change your relationship with your parents? I always get this question and I never know how to answer it um, because I didn't have a normal relationship to my parents to start with. So the family history and how it went on was my grandfather came back from the war, um, he started this family and everything looked fine but it's my notion but I think due to the guilt he carried and due to the way he was and he carried on his Nazi legacy and his Nazi convictions that he had, 
uh, that really worked and affected my father's life. Uh, so my father became a severe alcoholic. I didn't grow up in a family where you normally go to medical school and become a radiation oncologist and uh, get to MD Anderson to do research there. Um, so I have never been in a relationship to my father that I would have been able to talk to him about these subjects. Um, I'm the only one in my whole family who talks to all three of them, my father, my mother, and my sister. Um, but the relationship to my father is like, we're happy to talk about the weather and what we have done on the weekend, but we're not on a level of relationship that we can really talk about the, this stuff. This one kind of goes along with it. How did your grandfather's presence in the war affect how you were raised? And you just basically... Yeah, so that's... Is there a negative view of a German World War II veterans held by the German youth today in Germany? Yeah, so I think it's really, I think again, uh, it's about if you speak about what do you think about Nazis and you ask young people in Germany, what do you think about Nazis? Everyone would say, no, I'm against them. If you think, well, if, if you ask them, uh, what about your grandfather or your great grandfather? What have you heard about his war experiences and, and what do you think about him? It might be a different story. Um, so it's for for me Holocaust education and what do you what do we do with it is really what I've learned with the radiology project with the family project that we do with the marches we do. Um, every everyone agrees when you speak about the broad picture, but the closer it gets to the person himself, the harder it's get to it gets to face the truth. I know you're a friend of, of Yolt's, um, and he told me um, that 80% of Germans today still feel victimized. And as being a Nazi descendant, in your opinion, has the overall uh, Germany's attitude and views about World War II and anti-Semitism changed? Again, on the outside, yes. Um, you would not, I think you wouldn't, find lots of Germans who would say they are anti-Semitic. Um, you would find a lot of Germans who criticize the state of Israel with the same arguments that they criticized the Jews 50 years ago. Um, and what no, what no one in Germany really anticipated, but what we see now is with the refugees coming and that's a different topic if you think it's right how Germany handles it or not. But what happens is uh, that there are groups rising up against that, doing demonstrations, thousands of people um, attacking the refugees, attacking houses where the refugees are supposed to live, things like that, with the same hatred and with the same arguments that the Germans attacked the Jews 75 years ago. So yes, it's still there. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Remy Casanova from uh, College Park High School in the Woodlands. And my question is for Dr. Eckert. Um, I was curious if you think that your grandfather and, uh, and, and any other relatives um, of yours that were involved in the Holocaust, if you believe that they should have been punished for their actions? That's a good question. That is a good question. Um, the time that question really got personal was when um, I read a book about the Nazi doctors in Auschwitz um, by Robert J. Lifton. Um, and he quoted survivors of Auschwitz who said, if only Mengele was put before a court and was at the mercy of other people as I was at his mercy. And if only they had punished him, that would be the day when I could get sleep again and when I could get rest for my soul. And I read that and my first impulse was, well, my, my relatives who were involved are not there anymore, but 
it was like I would volunteer to do so if it helps the survivors. Um, so it's for me, it's not even about the German side or the justice of it, but for me, it's about really what what can we as Germans do to help the survivors and to help the families of the survivors to maybe handle their situation a little bit better. My name is Abby, um, Abby Trino, and I'm from Nimitz High School. This is a question uh, for Dr. Eckert. You mentioned that um, in schools in, in Germany that they did talk about the Holocaust, but it was more of a distant um, uh, perspective that they gave, gave it into. As a child, when you did learn about that, did you have any opinion to it, or did it only um, really come across your mind when you found and when you went into the archives and found that book and started your studies? So um, it always related to me, and it's like I think most people who first start reading about the Holocaust, you you are shocked. You see these pictures, you struggle with believing if it's really real because it it really is, seems not to be able to have happened, and you have you have to like struggle for it to say yeah that really happened that's what humans did to humans um and all this process i went through when i heard about it at school but it's still a different level than knowing that my own family was really involved with that i'm karsten kearns and i'm a student at texas a&m galveston and i have a question for dr eckert so even though you never knew your grandfather personally, do you feel any measure of guilt for what he did? And is there any similar sentiments for other descendants of Nazi war criminals? Um, so I wouldn't describe it as a feeling of guilt. It's more what Steve also said. It's more a feeling of responsibility of what do I do with it. Um, I have a problem with Germans, and you hear that quite a lot, who say, well, it's 70 years ago now, and shouldn't we go on, and should we really talk about the subject, and are, are we to be the guilty ones all the time, and in 70 years, and things like that. I have a problem with that, and what I normally tell people who say things like that is, as long as the survivors and the families of the survivors still suffer, we don't have a right to draw the line and to stop speaking about it. So it's, it's not a feeling of guilt because I know I'm not guilty of things my grandfather did, um, but it's a feeling of responsibility of, for example, sharing the story and, for example, speaking up. Visit www.marchofremembrancehouston.org www.marchofremembrance.org for information on an event in your area. Hear Holocaust survivors, World War II veterans, and or their families share their experiences as victims and liberators. Experience heartfelt testimonies, healing, and hope. Rise up and march against today's anti-Semitism. Marchofremembrance.org Marchofremembrancehouston.org